Okay. Okay. All right. Doing a little better now. Sorry about that, everyone. I'm not exactly sure what happened. Um, after numerous attempts, uh, YouTube system just uh, putting in their key, it just never seemed to make the channel go live. I'm not sure why, so I had to create a new stream. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, my apologies for that. Uh, we're gonna just take this back to step one here and start from the beginning. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Um, and yes, let's, let's discuss over here. I'll just give a second here for everyone to come on over um, from the other channel. Okay. All right. Seems like some people are coming over now. So again, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm not exactly sure what, uh, what was wrong. Uh, YouTube's key was not working. Uh, yes, this is Cubase in the back here. So, um, yes, I'm not exactly. Hi, Xavier. Uh, Xavier. Uh, hi, Harrison. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure what was going on with YouTube, but I'd just like to move past this and, uh, just proceed with what we really want to talk about, uh, which is, um, the BBC Symphony Orchestra. So uh, what we have here is our piccolo. Uh, of course, this library has a little bit of everything. It has that sort of full orchestra uh, complement of woodwinds, brass, percussion, and um, strings. And we're going to go through one, one instrument at a time, talk a bit about them. I don't want to kind of recreate what all the other tutorials and walkthroughs have done. I want to focus a little more on uh, what feels good, what is playable, what, uh, you know, is this, is this what's right for you? And so part of that is you have to let me know what are your questions about this library? What are the things that you want this library to do for you, right? So are you looking for a library that's going to uh, really improve your woodwind collection? Are you looking for a library that's going to give you a little bit of everything? Are you looking for uh, something that just feels playable for punchy brass. So just let me know what it is that you're looking for, and I'll really try and make sure that it that I can get to those questions. Um, one thing I'd also like to do in all this is I would like to uh, also accept some MIDI files. So if any of you have something from a project you recently worked on, you want to send me a MIDI file uh, to test out a patch, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, you know. There's going to be some limitations there. However, you programmed your MIDI file for one thing. Um, might not translate perfectly to this, but it might give you an idea. Uh, Gmail RCF says, what would be the main reason for people to buy this as opposed to regular Spitfire libraries? Um, their idea is that this is sort of a cohesive whole. Uh, and yes, definitely, as Harrison says, the cost. Um, as it's on special for $750 uh, US, uh, or roughly the similar in uh, euros and or pounds, um, there is definitely a, a good reason to, to buy this at a cost level compared to their larger symphonic orchestra collection. Um, it's a good starting point and it's a good base. Um, so for people that maybe haven't bought an orchestra library, like sort of a, a bread and butter orchestra library in many years, want something new and modern, this is a great start. Um, you know, but that being said, let's take actually a listen to the patches and, and see what works and what maybe doesn't work so well in this library. Um, so here we have this piccolo. I like this overall. 
uh, you know, this is the, their Legato extended patch, which, as I understand, provides nice flexibility with Legatos and even some runs. So that feels very fluid and nice, which is, not, uh, which is good. Um, and then, of course, with the mod wheel, we can control the dynamics. I think there's about three dynamic layers or so, which is uh, which is okay. It's not bad, uh, and it transitions between them smoothly enough on the piccolo. And it does get very nice and quiet. Please let me know if there's any issues with the. If you want something a bit louder or quieter, I can easily adjust those levels. Um, so moving on, uh, we also have. Uh, when it comes to levels and dynamics, like I said, there's the mod wheel, which controls the sort of different sample layers. We also have expression, CC11, which is overall volume. And then the instrument plugin itself has a volume output, which defaults to 0 dB and goes to plus 12. So lots of options to control the levels. Um, in terms of the interface, um, uh, how am I feeling about the new player? Well, the new player is interesting. Um, I think there's lots of good stuff about it. Um, certainly people love love things that they know, and if they know contact, then there's lots of good about that. Um, I think the one thing I can say about, about this plugin per se is uh, there is a known uh, bug right now uh, when it released that on Windows there were some issues with RAM, and it would load more into RAM than it's supposed to. Uh, I believe that's uh, either fixed or going to be fixed very soon. Um, otherwise, the plugin feels good and nice. I find this interface a little confusing. Uh, for example, this icon here is not clear to me that this is uh, velocity layers or or like the mod wheel. That to me is not clear. Uh, nor is this clear that this is expression. So these kinds of symbols I find, oh, it is fixed now. Okay, good, yeah. Uh, I just updated last night and I wasn't sure if, uh, if it had been addressed, so. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what these things mean just by their, by their default appearance. And, you know, especially within the company, within Montreal Music Labs, we really wanna make sure that everything is very obvious to users from first glance, as much as possible. Um, you know, and this this icon here, I don't know what this means. Uh, it would be nice if the text just showed me right away. I can click on it and I can see that it's reverb, and then I can make that a hundred or make it zero. So, but and I can also adjust vibrato like that. But again, it's not clear to me what this is. Just looking at it like this. Um, but that being said, it's nice. Um, Aside from that, we also have uh, all the key switches down here. And I get that some of these patches have lots of key switches. It does feel a bit of a shame that there's only eight on a page and there's no easy way to kind of flow through them that I actually have to click a button to go to the next one. Um, that's something about the interface that I feel is a little clunky. And in the strings, we'll see that there's actually three patches. And so it makes it uh, quite a bit clunky. Um, Aside from that, the mixer is pretty good, uh, pretty straightforward. Again, it's kind of this page layout, which uh, a little, not my favorite. Um, and then instead of clicking over here, you can see all of your effects options here, uh, which is nice. But again, when you're just looking at this interface, because you can minimize it, then it's not clear what you're looking at. So. Coming back to what the actual sounds are like. Um, so this legato is nice and fluid. The longs. Can I assign different mic positions to separate outputs in my DAW? I believe so. I saw this somewhere. Uh, so if I come here and if I throw on this and I can go stereo two, I'm in, I'm in VSL, I'm in VE Pro right now. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to create, um, uh, I'd have to insert a bus or, uh, yeah, I could do it. I could do a bus. I could go piccolo two 
And so now we would actually get both. This is the second mix. So something like that. Um, so that's pretty good and it's pretty straightforward. Um, we'll leave that one muted for now. Uh, let's come back here. Uh, yeah, so that is pretty straightforward. Um, and you know, it is really nice. Uh, they added that feature since Hans Zimmer. Yeah, with Road VP just into the plugin. Yeah, exactly. It just so happened I'm in VEP to do it. Uh, I think this could be really good for people that are doing, um, for people that really want to have that control over their mix, or if you're bringing your session to uh, to another mixer, I think it'd be really cool to 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 set up your your session in a way where you can have your close mics separate from your tree mics, from your outriggers and your ambience, and if you want, you could actually print all those things onto separate tracks, uh, you know. The way I set, I've set it up with my strings in the past or my other sections is I'll have all of my woodwinds or all of my strings print to one uh, to one audio track in the uh, the tree all prints to one audio track. So it's really like you get the whole sense of, okay, I've got one fader for the tree and then I have close mics that I can balance. So it really starts to feel a bit like mixing a real orchestral session. Um, so it's nice that they have all these options. And again, they've got options for Atmos as well. Uh, they've got mono options. They've, they've really provided lots and lots and lots of options. Balcony, the spill mics is a nice touch. Atmos front, Atmos rear. So really lots of great options for that. Um, and it seems like they've got 16 stereo out. So, um, so, Again, I think I think on the mixing side they did really good work, uh, and knowing from our own company as well, it's nice. I think they made a good choice, provided that this player works and people feel comfortable and confident in it, and that it 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 does what it's supposed to do. I think it's a good move on them to make their own player because they'll just have more control to do whatever they want. So that's also that's really good. Um, Moving on, also looking at the staccatissimo, um, this is, you know, I find these, um, I find these to be just a little, a little quiet. Um, and again, there's this tightness control here, which I don't understand what it does with this. It doesn't seem to make too much of a thing. Um, what spec computer am I running? Uh, I'm running a four core Intel i7. Uh, this is the 6700K uh, uh, chip. I've got 32 gigs of RAM on this on this uh, PC. Uh, and this library is loaded onto an M2, uh, a one terabyte M2. And it's since this most recent patch, it's loading really well. Uh, I was having issues with lengthy loading times um, before, uh, when I first got it. Um, so it is really nice. Uh, it is, it is working really well now and we'll see actually due to the streaming software, I can't load the, f uh, it's not necessarily safe to load the, the whole template. I, I didn't want to risk, um, uh, crashing the stream or anything. So we're just going to be doing it uh, section by section and you'll see how quickly it loads. So it's a, uh, it's quite good. Um, so again, lots of options here. Uh, they all sound pretty good. The staccato simos I find a bit quiet, but but there's also good dynamic range. But I, I feel like it could just be a bit punchier and a bit louder. Uh, does it also give pre-buffer size for RAM? Uh, that's a good question. I think there are plenty of options. We can go into settings, interface, uh, audio. Yeah, you can choose your preload size, your buffer size. There's lots of options. Master tuning, that's also nice. Um, uh, I'm not sure about Europe, but I know in North America we do, uh, in Montreal, the orchestra tunes at 442. So a lot of musicians here, they also, they just have their instruments always at 442. In other parts of the country, they have it at 441. So it's nice to have that option. Um, 
can enable memory mapping to improve IO speeds from disk. So lots, lots of great options. Uh, I think I think they did think through this uh, plugin well. Um, I saw one friend uh, of mine sort of. He had concerns that this plugin, that this library might not, um, that this library might not, that like East West did when they brought their stuff from contact to play, that it might uh, feel buggy and not good. And they were concerned that Spitfire might not make that transition well, but I think they've done this really well. It, it feels good. Uh, I have no issues aside from these little UI things, but the UI issues could have existed in, in uh, contact as well. So to me, I, I think, I think they did a good job. Um, so overall, the sounds on the piccolo, I think are quite good. Um, you know, all is really good. Things like the multi-tongue, they have these variations. Uh, and what that is, is you get this double tongue to triple tongue to the uh, uh, four sixteenth note kind of thing. I wish there was an easier way to control that or to automate it or to do, to do, to, to just make that more playable. Um, it seems, it seems counterintuitive to me to try and have to make that work in another way, especially for those of us that use VN Ensemble Pro, because if I wanted to automate that in, uh, in Cubase, uh, yes, they are synced to tempo. That was a very, I was worried about that at first. Um, but they are synced to tempo. That is in settings, is it? Or maybe not in settings. Uh, under this thing, yeah. So under the, the three dots here, you can go uh, sync to tempo is either on or off. And you can indeed do that. So I'll just pull this up a little bit and we'll do a quick test. So. Uh, so you can hear that it really does a great job. Just like that. That I I really think that was a nice touch. Um, because it's so easy to to just you know overlook that maybe, but they they really they they did think that one through nicely. Um here, let's close this back again. Um, yeah, th and that's, I, I'm with you, Harrison. I think that's one of the things about this is that I know I know from, from designing our own software that it can get, it is really hard to make everything accessible, but everything not overloading, over overwhelming. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I did get it about a week ago, and the the, the learning curve, or a week and a half ago, it, the learning curve is pretty straightforward. Um, but that's also for me. Uh, I've I've been working. I'm I'm fairly technically able, and I'm able to do it, and I understand it, and I've looked at videos. But maybe for someone coming in fresh, it might be a bit uh, a bit uh, daunting or or, or uh, a bit much to just take on at first. But I think I think the thing about this is that it's it's really hard to find that balance of presenting everything and not too much um so there's you know it's 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 just a question of of, of balance and i i don't know that there's always a right uh, a right way to do things um but i suppose it, it's a balance of learning of what what is reasonable for the user to learn and what is reasonable uh, for the user to expect in an interface. It's a real give and take. Um, it's, uh, it's, it can be tricky. Um, again, I, I say this from, from personal experience. Um, things that are obvious to me aren't necessarily obvious to someone else and vice versa. Um, but I think, I, I do think they did a, they did a great job here. Um, uh, in, in many respects. So, you know, it's something to be figured out. Um, in the meantime, let's let's try and keep going. Um, let's go on over to the flute. I, 
I think this flute sounds really nice. Uh, it feels very playable. It it just has a good, uh, it just has a really good feeling to it. Um, and it's it's a very pretty sound. I think it works really well. So I like that. Um, I'm just gonna, in case anyone else is coming into the old stream, I'm just gonna add it, uh, refresh that link. Uh, stream is now here. Uh, okay. So coming back, yeah, I, I like this food a lot. I think it's great. Feels very fluid to play. Uh, again, longs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have, there's enough technology in our life that uh, that causes enough grief. I think this one does balance out the uh, the 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 learning curve a bit. Um, but you know, uh, yes, Ray, there uh, there are perks. Uh, we're going to be getting to them in a little bit. Um, there's some good stuff and some 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 questions, some some issues I have with it. They're a little minor, but uh, it could have been a nice detail. Uh, again, you know, all these things, all the sounds are, are pretty good. And as we've covered in other things, you know, it's all pretty straightforward from a playing perspective. Um, next, we're gonna get the oboe. Oh, oh, actually, sorry. We're gonna get the flutes as a section. So, uh, um, here's the, the solo flute. And here's, and here we have the, the flute section. Uh, again, it's very much the same idea. Uh, it feels good to play, and I think, um, you know, I have zero qualms with the flute. Uh, when we get to the oboe, it's a very bright nasal sound. Now, you might just say, that's just an oboe, so, you know, <laughs> what, what did you expect? Um, I think, I think it's nice, but I, I, I prefer a little bit of a softer sound, but I suppose I could EQ that. It certainly doesn't sound bad. Icons for quick view would have been great. Um, uh, it's and bright a tad. I'm, I'm not sure I'm following exactly. Um, if you mean icons on on the, do you mean on icons on the GUI of the uh, icons on the GUI of the plugin itself? Uh, that could be nice. I, I didn't put much effort in this Cubase uh, template. Uh, this was just a, a rough thing for 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 working out today. Um, one thing I didn't talk about with this uh, plugin that I really love and that is so much better than Contact <laughs> uh, is selecting a patch. Uh, you can choose so easily here. You can make starred. Uh, you can choose from your favorites. So you can say flute is my favorite and now it appears in your starred. So that's really cool. If I clear that filter and I take off that, it's gone. Uh, if I look at the selection, I can see that. If I go, if I want to see more from flutes, I can see the different types of flutes. Uh, this is really nice. And then of course, it's all divided by bra uh, by section. I can see everything. And then see, they even have these icons, right? Uh, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> I love this brass, the horn missing the horn, part of the horn. Um, so th all of this, I think is really nice. I think I think this is good, and I think it could have been even better if they had a search on it. If you could just type in, um, you know, this is something that we feel very passionate about. We want we want sounds to just feel. We want finding sounds and everything to just be easy. We don't even have to think about it. So this I think is just great. Um, 
So yeah, hundred percent. I think I think the uh, the loading a patch interface is pretty great. Um, so coming back to this oboe again, I think I think it's a very nice oboe. Uh, it fits. Uh, I I could find a place for it in my in my writing setup. There's uh, there are other oboe sounds I like as well, but uh, this totally has a place. It's very dynamic, which I like. Something I've noticed that they've done in a lot of their string libraries, but not as much in their woodwinds or brass, is in their string libraries, you can usually, if you play a note short, you kind of have the feeling of a staccato, but like you don't always get that in these woodwinds or the brass. Sometimes it feels like a bit of a long note that was just cut short. Uh, no, I, I, I muted it, I, I believe. Um, uh, I, I muted the extra mix, yeah. Um, so it should be, it should be uh, all good. And of course, yeah, yeah, we only have that one going, so. But thanks. Um, you know, the staccatos. Sounds good to me. One thing that they have in this library is they say if you do a stronger attack, it has more of a ring out on the multi-tongue. And if you do a softer attack, it, it makes it a, a shorter last note. I find in playing it, at least on my keyboard, uh, the M Audio 8, uh, M Audio 88 ES, Keystation 88 ES, which is a, a semi-weighted keyboard, I find it hard to get that that distinction. Like it's it doesn't the the transition point between those two it doesn't feel natural on this keyboard, but that might just be my keyboard. Maybe on your keyboard it feels better. Uh, there might be ways of, of uh, balancing that or adjusting it. Um, so that's that's sort of the the oboe. Again, we also have the oboe section. I think this sounds really nice as well. Um, it can kind of give a bit of a Mahler feel. Uh, which is nice. This one I feel doesn't have that same dynamic range as the, as the, as the uh, solo oboe. It just doesn't kind of. It just doesn't give that same uh, sense of uh, of expansive, like really quiet and and really full bodied and loud. But see, I'm about halfway on the on the mod wheel here, and it feels like it's about its loudest. So that's one thing I. I I'm not sure if I would want them to just make it louder for the sake of it being louder, but somehow it, in using the mod wheel to perform the music, it doesn't feel, I don't feel like I'm getting the response that I want, if that makes sense. Um, so that's that's one observation from this. And of course the, the patches are, are much like the other ones. Um, so that's that's all fine. The English horn. One thing I found kind of interesting about this English horn um, is they, they kind of isolated it from sort of the main section, you know, flutes, piccolo, oboe, clarinet, and then they kind of had it in like this extra woodwinds down here. Not a problem, but just something I noticed. Um,
Uh, it shouldn't be in mono, no. Most of these are very, I mean, the woodwinds generally are pretty central in the orchestra, but uh, just, just for a, a test, just to make sure here, uh, let's, let's just try something. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, where is it here? Audio fader. Let's try this. That's, there's no audio going through that, sorry. Let's just see this and let's go, just try that for a second. You should be hearing that only on the left side. Um, At least I, I am. So please let me know if you if you aren't. Uh, the woodwinds generally are panned are are quite cent quite center panned. Um, this English horn doesn't give me the the same feeling um, as the main instruments, as the oboe, as the uh, as the flute. I don't know why. It just doesn't have that same sort of ring to it. Uh, there is there is a release setting. And actually, that's an interesting question or, or point, Johnny, is that I feel I feel sometimes these things are very inconsistent. Um, and actually, see, this is what I mean by inconsistent. Some patches or some things do have a release control, but this particular patch, this legato patch, doesn't. But maybe if I go to this long, does it have it? It does. So I guess because in the legato version, they're actually trying, they're supposedly handling all that themselves. Maybe it doesn't, uh, it doesn't quite work. Uh, they don't allow you to, to mess with the, with the release, but I don't, yeah, to me somehow, maybe that doesn't make sense. It would be nice to have that option. Uh, okay, so I'm not exactly sure what um, what their reasoning is, uh, but that's also maybe something. Uh, check oboe's release on legato. Yeah, we can see about that. Uh, so here's the. Uh, uh, let's come on, give me my give me my oboes. See, that one doesn't sound so bad. That does sound really nice. And that's what I mean, like, the English horn just felt like it didn't have the same attention put into it. And I don't know why, because, you know, the English horn is a beautiful instrument as well, and It also sounds a lot drier, and even though this is the the same mix one, everything we're listening to is on mix one. Um, so I don't know why this. Uh, I don't know why that. I don't know what makes it that some sound different than others, and that's something I've heard in a few of the sections. Is that there's an inconsistency to some of that. It's uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, English horn is not comparable to VSLs. Sorry. Well, we can we can jump ahead a little bit here. We'll we'll come to that in a sec, because um, I do have two other comparisons I want to bring to something in a second. Uh, I think 
I think it's possible that they spent a lot of time on detail for the ones for the real bread and butter, but maybe on some of the other ones they plan on revisiting in an update. I'm not sure. Um, but it does feel, it doesn't feel the same as the others. And that is one thing I, I feel like I can say with confidence. Um, you know, again, is it the end of the world? Maybe not. But if it's what, if you were looking for a really solid woodwind upgrade to your library and that didn't have it, well, then that would, that would be, that would be disappointing. Um, I think, um, let's just jump ahead here for a second to the clarinets. So this clarinet sounds nice. Um, I think there's lots of nice things about it. Um, and again, you know, with the with the legato. The other thing I can say about this uh, about this legato is that about this clarinet, there's just a little especially in this lower range, there's a little bit of a honkiness, kind of a nasal honkiness that bothers me. Um, in the low D, it's, it's not uncommon. There's just a bit of a, there's just a bit of a nasal tone there. And that, and that, uh, I don't know, this is, this is, this is my taste. Again, you know, this, it's not that this is 100% uh, right or wrong. It's just it's just my feeling on it. Um, but now this is a bit weird. This is a solo clarinet, and sometimes I get the feeling that there's just a little bit of a of a chorusy kind of effect on the legato. I mean, that's either that or it's just a really big vibrato. But you know, and can I control the vibrato here? I can. This, uh, as true with the BBC Symphony Orchestra as it is with other, um, as it is with other uh, Spitfire products, the vibrato control is very on-off. Even though they have a slider of like zero to a hundred, it's very kind of on-off. So like we can just hear right here, lots of vibrato, no vibrato. No change on this side. No change on this side. So I find that a bit disappointing. I wish they were able to find a way to, to blend, to do a little more of a seamless blend. Um, you know, I think that would be, I think that would be much appreciated and would be really nice. Uh, but, and again, I the, the same as is true on their Spitfire chamber strings and, and other libraries. Uh, it's something I felt with a lot of the things with their own plugin and with their own, uh, with this new library, I was, I was hoping that they might bring something new like that to it, where you could really do a progressive vibrato. L not quite the case. Um, oh, and right now we're on the clarinets at three, sorry. Uh, wait a second. Just make sure we're listening to the right one here. Yeah. You know, I may have been I may have been playing on the wrong track there. I'm sorry. But it is it, this is still a nice Ah, I wish another another like little part of me always wishes there was just one note higher. A high F on clarinet is to me pretty I want to say standard. Uh, as a former clarinet player in another life, uh, I've played a few high Fs in my time and just kind of wish, I just kind of wish I could have that, but you know, that's maybe just me. <laughs> Moving on, so yeah. We do have this, this section clarinet. I'm sorry, we were listening to the wrong thing. My, uh, I hadn't realized right away. Uh, the section clarinets, they sound pretty nice as well. You'll see that when it doesn't say extended legato, 
they don't have that same fluidity that the flutes had, where I could really do, uh, yeah, actually, this is the flute. You'll see it says legato extended. Um, that makes it feel very fluid. If I come back to the, if it just says standard legato, that's pretty good, but some sometimes it just doesn't quite I find it doesn't always feel, it doesn't have that same fluidity in quite the same way, but it's still very good. It's still very good. Now on this bass clarinet, it's a bit quiet, I'm just gonna boost it a bit. I don't know why the, uh, the solo clarinetto legato, clarinet legato, uh, here, I'll come back to that. That feels a little funny. For what is actually a really easy legato transition on the actual, on a real clarinet, it's 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 really quite a simple fingering change. Um, it's a shame that that doesn't feel... Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's not quite as agile and, you know, we'll take that for what it is. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's really funny, that one. So there are these little things, and I'm not sure what makes that or why that is. Uh, I, I'm not going to say that that's a, a problem that that they they messed up or something. Uh, you know, this is a lot of these things I say as someone that really uh, is there a speed setting? That's a good question. Um, I don't think so. Maybe that's what tightness is, but not on the legato. Um, yeah, not on the legato, but again, like staccatissimo, and if we go to the tightness setting. I don't know what that does, uh, but in the legato, there is no speed setting, um, which that's a shame, but it is what it is. I think, again, for, for what this library is, kind of a, a starting point, it's kind of... Like I get it, you know, you can't, it's it's hard to do everything all at once. Uh, so, you know, if it's something that we really want and, you know, maybe if there's enough pressure on them, they, they could see about introducing that. I don't know if that would require more recording at the source or not, but, you know, I think, I think there's still, it's still really good. I think there is a lot of good about this. Uh, coming back to this bass clarinet though, this one I definitely feel there's just a bit too much of a honky sound. And again, this one, I don't know why, the release isn't there, uh, natural reverb isn't built in, even though we're on just standard mix one. So I can add some reverb. It's not even playing. But yeah. Yeah, which is just kind of a shame. Uh, and like I said, we're gonna come back to an example in just a second here. Staccatos are kind of nice. You know, something there. Uh, it could have a little more punch. You know, so it's, it's, there is something to, to be said for that. Um, you know, the Marcato uh, is, uh, is nice as well. So lots of good stuff. 
we're going to come to the bassoon now. And with the bassoon, I wanted to give some specific examples of how this library compares to maybe some other libraries. Um, and this bassoon sounds... It sounds nice. It's it's it feels pretty playable. It feels very nice to play. That feels good. Um just for fun though, I wanted to compare this bassoon to the VSL Special Edition bassoons. Uh, they're now a synchronized version. Um, just for comparison. And I want to do one example. Uh, you, Yeah, you like the reedy sound, uh, Johnny. There is something that's nice to that. And again, you know, there is no one right way to play an instrument. I mean, there are definitely, you know, there are there is sort of standardized good tones and you know teachers insist on this and that uh yeah the space is inconsistent it's it it feels it feels not all of them feel a hundred percent just right sometimes but let's listen to this vsl synchronized um this vsl uh oh, that's not what i wanted i wanted to come here and pull uh, no not that i said i want da, da, da. No, that's fine. Sorry, I'm slightly new to uh, to uh, Cubase here, so I'm just gonna hide this for a sec, and I'm gonna pull open this and pull open this. <laughs> To me, this this is a nice sounding bassoon. Uh, it's much softer. It's not as it's not as uh, honky, but it's 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 nice. Yeah, it's a very different feel, and there's there's something that's nice about this um, that I like, and this is a library that's essentially 15 years old, and it, it, it really does have a, it has a nice singing sound, but it's much more limited. Uh, so the next one I want to look at here is actually this one that I just got. Um, attack it louder. Okay, I'll see what I can do. You know, it, there is something nice to it, but this one I just got from Ember, Embertone last night. Uh, it's on sale for a ridiculously cheap amount of money. I don't know how they can sell it for this little, but this instrument just sounds fantastic. And I just, I want to play it for comparison because I think it's really worth hearing. mod wheel on this controls the vibrato because we were talking about, about that before and listen to how this controls the vibrato It's on sale right now for $30. That this is a $30 instrument just blows my mind. This sounds amazing. Um, their trumpet also sounds pretty good. Their $30 trumpet also sounds pretty good. So I love Embertone for doing just these little things just right. Um, and you know, they, they recorded somebody great for this and I, I, I think they, they really do a great job. Um, 
you know, just for fun here, I'll pull up, uh, no, not media, other samples, and Ember Tone. Uh, we were talking about clarinet as well, so I'll pull up their clarinet, just, again, just for comparison. I'll, okay, jumping around here a bit. Let's listen to the BBC bassoon. This note I found interesting on the on the BBC bassoon. Uh, let's bring that. <laughs> um, the on the BBC bassoon here, there's this one tiny little bug. It was really interesting. Uh, well, it's maybe not a bug, but it's uh, something particular from the recording session. The legato transitions to A two. So here's middle C going down to A2. You can hear this funny adjustment in the tone of that uh, note. So when you just play the A on its own, it sounds beautiful. But then if you go, there's that color shift there, which is interesting. Um, again, I don't, I wouldn't call that a, a, a bug, but it's just an interesting difference in uh, in the approach. Um, it's possible that Spitfire and some of their other libraries, they are known to, to allow just a bit of, um, more of a, a loose, they're, they, they can be a little more relaxed when it comes to really, uh, perfection. Yeah. Part of the Spitfire charm. Exactly. It's, it's, they, they're okay with little, little happy accidents kind of thing, uh, to quote Bob Ross, right? So it's just it's just something of note. That's all. And so just to do a little back to back here, here's this uh, here's the Spitfire bassoon. Here's the VSL synchronized uh, special edition, and here's the Ember Tone. So oh, thanks so much for stopping stopping by. I uh, hope you hope you got something out of it. Um, so it's just interesting to hear these different things. Uh, just for fun now, we'll, we'll go to this clarinet just to hear uh, a bit of the difference there. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on these other instruments. Um, again, just because the Ember Tone one is on sale right now at $30, it, it, like, it was just a no-brainer. And as a wind player, as a, like, I'm primarily a trumpet player, but coming from that wind section, it just, it made me feel like, oh, this is what we're doing. Um, the Ember Tone Clarinet, I think this is a slightly older library, but it's it's definitely in the same vein. Uh, they have some very nice things. Uh, I got this on a year or two ago on a Black Friday sale for like 60 bucks. You know, again, I, I don't know how they how they have a, uh, a successful business model when they do good products for so, for so cheap, but this is, I think this is great. It's a very pretty tone. It's not a. Uh, it's not quite as raw uh, as the as the uh, BBC. That's the BBC, and here's the herring. It's it's much softer, much much more delicate, and sort of pretty. Uh, I like it, uh, but they they do different things, you know. both really nice options, I think. So, uh, coming back now, uh, I think we've gone through most of the, the, what the feeling is on the, uh, woodwinds. Uh, yeah, the transitions sound uh, quite nice on it. Um, again, it's, it's just a bit different, you know, there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with this, right? But it's just different. Um, it is quicker. But it's, I don't know, uh, like I said, I, I don't think there's anything wrong, but it's just different. So now we're going to just pop on over to the brass. 
yeah, like that's it. The tone is good. Um, it's 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 a different tone. So it's one of those things you might want. It's about what's right for like as a film composer. It's about what's right for the scene. It's about what's right for the style of music you're doing. Um, you know, it kind of depends. So loading into the brass now. Um, Close that and close that. So pretty much the, the, the same overall idea here. We're going to just let things load up. Let's bring that back here. So now you can see how things are loading up on my system. Uh, all in all, not a bad load time. Um, it's getting that very much out of the right speaker. Let's see if there's a reason why. Is there something on this side? Is it happening in Cubase? Okay, that's a mistake. There we go. All right, all right, all right. So now let's go here. Let's bring back that. Okay, so the horn, I think this sounds nice. So I think that sounds pretty good. Um, and again, this is sort of that extended uh, legato. Again, as a, as a brass player, there are those little things that I wish it could do. Um, for example, it doesn't have a low E flat. Uh, and one of my tests is I like to play the opening line from Ein Heldenleben by Richard Strauss. And uh, I, I can't do it without my low E flat. So that's a bit of a shame, because uh, normally it goes like this. <laughs> You know that's just that's just me because uh, I go to the I go to the pieces that I know uh, to reference um, you know to see how does it perform in sort of a in a real world context because those are the kinds of things that I that I think of um, but you know to that and we could also go something that uh, maybe other film composers know uh, you know here in the chat who are people film composers here or are they do you do other types of music um, just let me know. Because, uh, you know, we can also do things like this, right? So I think that sounds really nice. And then you've got these cuivre things. These are particularly the brass. Music for media adverts. Tell yeah, exactly. So the cuivre sounds really good. You know.
Yeah, exactly. Uh, great, great for the John Williams sound. I mean, you know, I'm trying to think of like, uh, what's 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 another example? Um, uh, da, da, da. <laughs> Yeah, I think that sounds. I think that sounds nice. The sforzandos are good. I, I could use just a little more bite on it, but like it just feels a little delicate. Staccatissimos. Now this is something I've noticed in the brass, particularly the staccatissimos are really quiet. Uh, I'm just just so I'm just so I'm not uh, just so I'm not crazy. Is everyone else experiencing that same? Oh, you know what? You you know what? You're entirely right. I my apologies. I I set something in a setting long long ago, and I haven't thought of it since. So you know what? You are a hundred percent right. Advanced audio properties. Ah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Xavier. Uh, you are 100% right. It was down mixed to mono. Let me know if this is better now. Um, uh, let's just go to this and let's just do a quick test here. Uh, we go like that and we go. Let me know if this is better. Okay, that should be better now. Yeah, that should be better. Um, there we go. I'm I'm sorry about that. Again, that was a that was a setting in my in OBS that I set up uh, ages ago, and I I didn't think to change it. So I'll take the blame on that one. All right, there we go. All right. So let's let's get back to the uh, let's get back to the demo here. Um, so this the the these staccatissimos they just don't even at their loudest volume uh, like at the highest velocity they aren't really kicking into into full gear I find you know the the level is just a bit quiet. You know, and I find that a shame because obviously the other loud sounds like the cuivre are all there. But I know, as a brass player, I know how loud you can push. Uh, I know how loud you can push uh, a staccatissimo, and maybe not every single note, but it just it it's just not feeling it. You know, um, the multi tongues uh, on brass sound good. Again, this variation kind of hidden away, but. Um, it would be nice. It would be nice if there was an easier way to control the accents on these. Uh, now I'm getting really picky as a brass player to be like, I want to be able to control if I'm going da -da or da -da, or if I'm going to go or if I'm going to go da -da -da. like I want I want more control on on that an easy control but again these are getting into really particular use cases that I can understand if not everyone's going to be doing that uh programming that uh, you know but as as a brass player it's it's that's 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 on me you know like that's that's one thing that I like and that I want so uh, I don't know of a hidden I don't know of a hidden setting for the st staccatissimo aggression um, it is what it is, you know. Um, there are these marcatos. Again, they don't really have that bite either. We can, I believe you can go shift click and now you can activate two at the same time. I believe, right? So if, if I choose that and then I go, uh, let me see how this works. 
I think if I go like, or actually let's, let's go this and maybe this. And let's go. Yeah, I think there is a way to do that. The horn sec section works better with mix too. Um, yeah, we can we can take a look at that. Uh, so you can mix, you can shift click patches together to make them play together. Um, but that's not that's not an ideal solution. You know, my my feeling with any with any library is that you want it to just be like, oh, this works off the bat. I can just, it feels good to play right from the get go. So let's let's take a listen to this horn section now. <laughs> section feels good. Uh, I like it. We can try mix two. Let's let's just try that. Let's throw on uh, not on global. Uh, so let's leave it on advanced. Let's not go global. Hey. Uh, let's go mix two off. Let's yeah. Let's 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 try this. So the staccatissimos here. It is a little bit better, but you know that to me it should still be the same on the other one as well, right? Because you know if I'm doing chords, maybe that's not what you technically want, right? But even then, like you know something like the 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 East West Orchestra Gold from ten fifteen years ago has has killer uh, has you know killer stacca uh, staccatissimos and stuff. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, I, again, like I, I, harken, I harken back to this a lot as a brass player and having many conductors give me the hand, you know, I know how loud we can be and how loud we should be, you know, and I, I was just at the symphony the other night and, you know, it was amazing. It was great to, it's great hearing just the real, you need that dynamic expression because that's the difference between real playing and the virtual instrument stuff that we get stuck with. And you need that dynamic range because that's what real musicians bring is, is real dynamic range and expression through dynamics. And for, for my students, that's also the, one of the first things I talk to them about is like, you know, if your music isn't dynamic, writing music, being a film composer and being, uh, and writing music, uh, producing music uh, digitally, it's you're not just writing notes on a page. You're performing the music. You're making it sing. You're you've got to. It's like they get so caught up with putting the notes down in their sequencer that they forget that they have to. To they forget about phrasing. They get they forget about making it uh, live. You know. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a little. It's just a little soft. But the qui braise. <laughs> Exactly, but you know, something like that. Uh, okay, so you know the long sport sandos. See, that's nice, and that's what I was expecting from the from the solo one that we didn't have there. Just gonna let it come back here. It just feels a little soft compared to. There's a little more punch there, and that's just really nice, you know. Uh, the multi tongues again. These are great. Uh... 
SSB sounds better about stack as Berlin brass, but SSB is full out of control with long staccato, etc. Due to the tail baked into the samples beside the transitions, whereas when you want to get that bite. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we're always fighting a technical game, and that's, what's, that's what gets frustrating when you're composing, is you want to focus on those creative things and just, like, I want to just be making music and, and performing and, and making something work. And so, you know, there are nice things about this brass library from from the BBC Symphony Orchestra, but it's like with so many other libraries, it has those same little hangups. And it's something that I find about, not just about uh, Spitfire, but in particular, like looking at the Spitfire library is that there is this issue of, they put a lot of attention on their strings and their strings sound fantastic. Sometimes I feel it comes at the cost of their woodwinds and brass. Um, and it's my same feeling about the Spitfire Symphonic Brass as well, is that sometimes I just feel the playability or something about it is just not quite right. Ooh, that was a bit hot. Um... Yeah. So. Yeah, let's go. You know, there is still a lot of nice stuff to this. So, you know, we can, we can, it's easy to be picky, but honestly, there is still good stuff going on here. So, now, speaking of being picky, I'm gonna be, I, I am a trumpet player. That's, that's my background. Like, you know, I'm gonna be picky about this because one thing the horns didn't have are mutes uh, or stopped horn. I find that frustrating as a composer. To me, that's, that's, Straight mutes are standard across all brass instruments. This is not. This is nothing new. This is not uh, anything crazy. Um, you know. Like, I've got a lot of mutes. You know, and I'm not expecting all of these, but I'm just saying, it would be nice to have a few. To have a few more mute options and there are none and like it's frustrating because a real you know a real orchestra trumpet players when they're doing a concert they don't just even have one straight mute they have three or four and depending on the kind of music that they're playing uh yeah and bass flute too i mean i you know, bass flute I can get. I can kind of get bass flute, you know, that it's not possible to have every single instrument, but this is a standard part of a standard instrument. Straight mutes, and I love, I don't know of a single library, uh, I don't know of a single library that has cup mutes, you know, um, harmon mutes, they sometimes have uh, only with stem or only without stem. We don't have any of that here. And, you know, it's, again, it's, as a trumpet player, I find it really frustrating. Now, moving on to the next part of this trumpet, I'll always be really critical of trumpets. But this trumpet, it lacks soul for me. It lacks character. It lacks, it lacks punch. It doesn't, it doesn't have a singing quality. This is so clear, so clean, so pristine, but... We're not getting, we're not getting that, that huge, big trumpet sound that orchestral trumpets can really bring to the, to their, to their game, you know? So it's just like... I mean, this, 
and so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a big asterisk on this because you're right, Johnny. There is no big bite. I also dislike when brass libraries only give big bite, and so I like that they they do put a focus on oh, you know we're gonna have we can give uh, soft trumpets a place in the orchestra too, which is nice because you know. That sounds really nice. But why can't I also have, you know, my... Now, I'm gonna just give an example. Uh, I'm gonna give a different example of one. Um, again, I'm gonna go back to Embertone here because to me, they just get it. This is a $30 instrument, and how they do this for $30, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't, there's something I don't like about this. What, this trumpet feels a bit slow and clunky to play for the legato, but let me tell you, it sings. I'll, the level feels a bit low. I'm just going to boost it a bit. So you can hear how these uh, transitions are just a bit, they're just a bit slow. Which isn't nice, but if you're doing a big, long uh, line like It has a nice like singing quality to it. Those those legato transitions really kind of sing, which when I come back to the BBC one here, yeah, the, the sample modeling uh, trumpet uh, does feel very playable, and I like that, and it has a nice bright thing, but it's not good for it's it, to me it doesn't feel like an orchestral trumpet. That's my only like little thing about it is it doesn't, it's not what I, it's not what I strive to sound and play like when I'm playing, when I play an orchestra. Oh, I haven't played an orchestra in many, many years now, but you know, that's not the the sound and the approach. So to me, it, it it's good and I like it for some things because it has a good bite and it has a good brassy feel, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like orchestral playing to me, but so my feeling about this is like, this is a nice tame trumpet sound. Um, you know. And as soon as we go to these longs, we get a little bit better. So those are nice. The staccatissimos. Push the up of the ambience and the tree mics to get the right resonance. Yeah, exactly. Like there's there's lots of things like that I could do. I was trying not to do too much of that um, because I wanted to try and keep the the listening consistent. Uh, to always be listening to mix one across all of them, just to give a sense of what what it might be like for most people out of the box. Um, I agree. Like we can do lots of things where we try and you know customize the mix and uh, you know I, I definitely encourage people I mean they we can we can try this a bit uh, but just just to know that that's what I had been thinking of uh, was 
was trying to keep it consistent with, you know, always using the same thing. But no, it, it's good to try. It's, it's good to try. Now the quivery does sound, you know, nice and bright. But there's a big problem with the quivre. I, you know, it's it's the right tone, and in the lower octaves, it sound it sounds really good. But now listen, what happens when we get a little bit higher? Oh. Those E's there aren't quite in tune. Those guys are kind of finding their way together. That's a little rock and roll. Yeah, we're getting into some weird territory there. I think like the like on their own feels good. Feels good, but it's a bit sharp and and it'd be one thing if it was just one octave and they didn't catch that. I I could understand that, but like kind of settles in and I understand that when you're playing at that intensity there's going to be a natural shape to that uh yeah like there's there's going to be a, a natural wavering quality to the tone but just from a practical standpoint as a composer that would be frustrating where you're trying to write something and make it sound a certain way and you want you want your brass to be like da, 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 da. you know you can't, you're not going to put that on, you're not going to send that to the client. You know what I mean? Because the client's just going to be like, ah, that sounds out of tune. So, I mean, I, I would have, I would have trouble sending that. So, so yes, it has, it has the right character, but from an execution, I would, I would have loved it if, uh, if Spitfire could have adjusted that a bit to just, you know, Bring that into control a little bit, that's all. But these sound great. That sounds fine. I mentioned about the, the multi-tongue things before with my keyboard. I have a hard time getting it to be just what I want. It's, it's a bit tricky still. Uh, and, you know, again, kind of like I was saying, I, I feel like, you know, trills. I wish there was a speed control on the trills. Just feels a bit fast. You know, a, a trumpet player wouldn't really do it like that unless it was just as the effect. We would add a little intro to it, like, da, you know, it would just start a little slower. This just feels so immediate. Just a bit fast. It's it's not my thing, but. Um, so on the solo trumpet, lots of good, but just, I don't know. It just, a few of those little things just get to me. And again, Full disclosure, I'm a picky ass trumpet player, and yeah, that, uh, so I can I I'll cut them a little slack, but at the same time, I expect certain things. <laughs> yeah, the, the trills the trills aren't necessarily that bad if you're going for a certain effect and you want to just like give that that if you just want to give that feeling of uh, of being part of a texture, I think it's great, but. If you were going to have it a bit more exposed, it's not going to give that feeling. And while it might not be every composer, um, well, us in the film industry, we might do one thing. But if concert composers are deciding to use this for a mock-up tool, they might be like, what even is that? That's nothing at all like I would do. Or maybe they would like it. I'm not sure. But 
there are definitely different use cases for different people. And I think if there was an, a way to provide that option, that'd be great. Um, but again, no mutes. Uh, it's a shame. It's, uh, you know, I get it. There's, there's a limit to how much you can do on everything here. Um, but it's just a shame. So let's listen to this. Uh, this is the trumpet section. Overall, pretty good. Uh, sometimes on these legatos, it's just a bit too much uh, of an attack. You kind of hear that uh, that they blended a staccato and a long note together there. It's, you know, it's a uh, not something that I like. Again, not really that sense of like singing legato, um, which, you know, I find to be a bit of a shame, but longs are good otherwise. That all sounds good. Staccatissimo. I wish there was a way to capture a little more uh, nuance with with controlling the length of those things but you know see here's the irony the section trumpets sound more in tune maybe it's not ironic maybe it's because they're already kind of a chorus effect but these can sound in tune at the octave Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's, I'm being like again, I'm being a little bit picky because you know, they still did a really good job on a lot of things, but you know. Uh, no, see that's the reverb variation. Sounds good. Really, it sounds good. One thing we haven't talked about is you can actually customize. Um, you can customize all of these things. Uh, you can customize what shows up and what doesn't. Uh, and you can add things, remove things. You can do whatever you want. Uh, so I think that's really nice. Um, uh, -da. How do I get back? Yeah, and you can go save. And you can, uh, it is important. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I agree. Uh, I think all I mean to say is this, pro this project is a massive undertaking. I can understand how some things maybe slip through. That's, I think that's what I mean. It's like, it's one thing when you're doing a dedicated brass library and you want that to, to, to sit right uh, to make sure that every single brass instrument is doing what it's supposed to do. When you're doing a full orchestra and you have like one million mics and all that, I, I, I can kind of understand where, where, where little oversights might happen. I think that's my point. So, uh, but yeah, overall, uh, you know, good sound, but at the same time, sometimes lacking a bit of that. Yeah, see, even that tuning there. Yeah. It's not so these trombones I think this sounds really good this trombone I, I like a lot Richard, that's a good question. Um, 
it remains to be seen in some of their other libraries. Um, uh, in some of their other libraries, uh, they haven't, you know, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. Um, I imagine the BBC's schedule is also very tight uh, in terms of when the hall is available. That hall is also going to be uh, torn down or or something at some point. It's uh, Something is happening with that hall. Uh, so if they were going to do something like that, it might actually be tricky. Uh, so I don't know how much they're going to be able to do uh, or what the time frame on any of that is. Uh, so we'll have to see. Um, uh, but going back to this library, I think this trombone sounds really fantastic. Considering trombones don't really have a, a true legato like most other instruments, uh, I think this really captures a nice balance of, uh, like trombones just lightly tongue their legatos. Um, uh, I think this does a nice balance of of feeling like like a legato, but not actually being one. Uh, I think they did this well. Um, switch articulations there. I forget how so this goes. So some nice things in there. Uh, the longs. And again, I, I love that their brass can be a bit quiet and still sound rich and, and nice. But you can also go big. And it doesn't sound just like horns. Like up here, when you kind of have them in close voicings, it sounds a bit like maybe like it could be horns. In the higher ranges. But in the lower ranges, well spaced. I think that sounds so beautiful. I I put this onto a library track that I was working on, and because I, I had something else previously, and it just it wasn't sitting well, and I just threw this in, and it just felt like. Oh, there, it filled up my chord just right. I, I think these trombones, some of the nicest, uh, for feeling like a section, some of the, some of the nicest. Uh, staccatissimos. Again, ignoring that, that level issue, it's a bit quiet, but... It would be nice to, they say staccatissimo. I would like to feel a little bit tighter. Maybe this, maybe this one can actually be tighter. Let's hear. Yeah, if I'm just hitting lightly, it feels, it still feels a bit long and resonant. I, I wish there was a way to just make it just feel a little snappier, a little tighter, but. This 
is going to be a bit louder. Queen brace sound great. Nothing, no complaints there. These feel really close compared to the other patches. Like if we go into the, the longs again, like there I feel like we're a little more, it feels a little more like the, like, like the section in the hall. But we come to this and it feels much more close mic. I'm not getting much room. Ah, I don't know. It's good. And the multi tongues are great as well. Uh, no, not that. See, that's what I feel like. They've got this knob in the middle and it's, it's very easy to forget what you're doing, so. And this should also be tempo synced. Yeah, so if I, uh, if I uh, actually adjusted the tempo here. I think that sounds great. So again, no complaints there. Um, you know, and... After that, we're getting into the trombone sections. Same kind of idea overall. They've got two bass trombones playing together. And it's the same kind of idea. You're gonna change, there you go. Um, got that nice low E. Sounds good. Multi tongues. Sounds fantastic. Feels really close. But it's good. Uh, moving on. This is contrabass trombone. So nice and big. I feel like it could be a little bit stronger, but but they've got the quibre. It's all good. And now we get to the to the tuba. For being the main mix, the tuba feels quite close and center. I don't know why that is. Um, To, um, I like that you're able to make it kind of a, a soft singing tuba. I wish it could go a little bit higher. It goes up to high E, which is pretty good. It, it's pretty good. I, I just wish I could do bid low from uh, pictures at an exhibition. You know, uh, uh, what is it now? Uh, goes up to the high G sharp, but you know. Down to low D. Uh, a low B flat would have been nice, but such is life. It's not too big of a deal because there is also a contrabass tuba, which we'll come to. Quivres. Sounds good. These feel so much more in the back, which is nice. Could have a little more punch, but at least they kind of feel like they're in the back where they where they belong, compared to the legato, which was much more like like sitting where the flutes are. So I think the the issue I have with that is that it the library positions itself as being. Uh, 
the library positions itself as being a sort of a cohesive whole, the, the whole orchestra, the same room, the spill mics, the this, the that. But then there are these little balance issues that I'm like, well, you know, if the legato feels close, but then the staccatissimos feel far further away and more in place, then how do I balance that? Yeah, overall, I think the tuba sounds really nice, but it's these little mix issues that I find kind of curious, right? Like, how do I balance, how do I balance this? Am I going to automate reverbs and am I going to automate levels and, 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 and volume just to make it sound like the tuba is always in the same place? Because to me, that sounds really quite different. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure. Just, just little things that might be of, of interest. Uh, we do have a contrabass tuba. I was saying it was a shame that it didn't go down to low B flat. Well, there is a contrabass tuba. Well, no, never mind. It doesn't go down to the low B flat either. Uh, you know, standard. It doesn't even have low C. Um, you know, orchestral tubas are often in C or B flat, uh, and it surprises me that they don't have the the low the low C there uh, or B flat. But uh, I had the the pleasure of working with a, a, a tuba player in a session and he's like, how low do you want it? And he's like, do you, do, you, do you want the lower octave? I can give you a low B flat. And you know, that's that's the fun part. And it's kind of a shame. Uh, it's kind of a shame if you're not exposing people to these options, so. Uh, but otherwise, you know, the, the contrabass tuba sounds good. You'll see fewer options. Uh, this could be fixed like SSO. You can create every single mix for every. That's that's maybe a good, that could be fixed, that is a fixed, but um, that shouldn't come down to the user in my opinion, right? It shouldn't be up to the user to create a single mix for every articulation. As a composer, I don't, unless I'm in a mixing mode and I wanna have fun and play around with that, but as a composer and as a creator, I want to focus on the creative. I want to focus on writing and, and thing. And I don't want to have to spend time creating single mixes for every articulation. You know what I mean? Like that, that's, that's my feeling on it is they're, they're positioning this as a, as a, as something that just works, uh, as, as an orchestra that just kind of works like that. So yeah, the key with the tube is the hall. So well, you know, like I said, it's to each their own. What I'm trying to go for here is is expose some things that I think are interesting, good, and some things that I find tricky or challenging and, you know, what I wish could be better. Uh, and, you know, to answer your questions as well. So if any of you have questions or concerns about that stuff, like, let me know, right? Like, if there's, if there's one particular sound you want fixed or you want to learn more about, then I... Let me know because I think it's it's worth going over. So I don't think there's any more on the brass here. No. So we're going to come back to here and we're going to jump over to the strings. Now, as is probably to be expected, um, the strings sound great. Uh, Spitfire. I have to do it with the template and with different libraries just one time. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, having been having been the assistant to other composers who's had to do things like that, because I, I I've worked with other composers who, you know, uh, as as their assistant in the past and setting up their templates and everything, and it's crazy to think that some people spend, you know hundreds or thousands of dollars on a library and then they have to hire somebody they have to hire somebody 
pay them a couple hundred dollars to then make it work for them when something like that could be made to work just out of the box but you know it's it's all it's all just uh these are all just uh, sort of discussions to have so okay so let's come here let's see what we got here yeah <laughs> And let's go MIDI focus. It's still loading in memory, but we're gonna just see how this feels. Their legato patches, this is what I want for their woodwinds and for their brass. This just feels good to play. Uh, somebody, I think somebody, uh, in another video was asking um, uh, template sharing will be much easier universal. I'm gonna come back to that in a second. Um, but these strings feel great to play and I just wish that it felt the same way with the brass. Like you can do that by doing uh, low velocity trigger and legato. That feels great for just doing light short notes. I think that feels so good. And I don't get that same feeling from the from the woodwinds and brass. I spent literally months for creating a really well-balanced template, melting uh, different libraries, even just one patch. It's tedious, I know. Yeah, exactly. And more power to you for doing that because if that works for you, then that's great. Uh, but, you know, not not everyone is is up for that. And not, not everyone, like I said, as much as possible as a composer, I just, when I want to sit down and write, I just want to sit down and write. You know, that's what it really comes down to. Uh, Johnny, back to your point, template sharing, etc., would be much easier universal. That's true, but I'm going to argue that that's always been the case. I think Spitfire's marketing was really good, and they're saying one hashtag one orchestra. This is a universal starting point. I could make the exact same argument for Vienna Special Edition. I could make the exact same argument for East-West Hollywood Orchestra uh, Gold. Uh, I could make the exact same argument for any library that does a full orchestra. You know what I mean? Uh, now, the Hollywood Orchestra were, were uh, divided into thing, but uh, the, the East-West Symphonic Orchestra Gold, it had everything. There was always that option, But the reality is that everyone buys the libraries that they feel works for them and feels good to them. And I, you know, I buy this stuff, but, you know, maybe a colleague of mine doesn't buy this stuff. And, you know, I was working on a project once where I was going to be mixing for somebody's, uh, uh, I was uh, I was talking with, the, with this composer, I was going to be uh, maybe mixing uh, this TV series for him. And we thought, oh, wouldn't it be easy if, you know, you could just send me your logic file and I could just open it up. But, you know, while we had a lot of the same libraries, I didn't have LA scoring strings or whatever it was. I forget now, you know, and that just kind of made it like, oh, OK, yes, yeah, so we won't work like that. And there's always going to be that one library that kind of makes it not like that. So it's I like the idea, but also the practicality, the reality is not quite as much. Uh, this would be really good, but, you know, maybe I love the horns balance and Harry Potter score, but another guy loves the Thomas Newman's treatment. It's hard. Yeah, exactly, right? And there's always going to be that that way of uh, balancing those things. One thing that I do like about Spitfire having their own plugin is, I've, I haven't played around with this too much, but this idea that things are advan uh, are global. So if I make, if I put Mix 2 on this, if it make, makes all all my other Spitfire plugins go to Mix 2, like the, the BBC Orchestra plugins go to Mix 2, that would be really cool. Um, I haven't tried it yet, and from the little playing around we've done today, it doesn't seem like it's doing that, but uh, 
things like that are why I think it's cool that they have their own plugin because that would probably be impossible in or just tricky or just trickier or whatever it is less convenient in contact so little things like that could be really interesting where it is possible to do mix presets uh, though you can possibly have that kind of stuff with uh, with what's it called with VEP or in Cubase you can have the mix snapshots and things like that but we're, we're getting into we're getting into some 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 details there so ah uh, just the relevant in, uh, to the instrument loaded in a particular instance. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. so you mean uh, you mean these mixes here? That's only relevant to the instrument loaded in a particular instance. Okay. Yeah, I would love it if I could just like flip that and it would flip them all. That would be really cool in my mind. But let's come back to these strings because again, they sound fantastic. <laughs> That sounds great. The pits, you know. Uh, sounds good. Staccatos. Spiccatos. Colenio. I find what I was complaining about brass and stuff, again, why do they get two lengths of short notes and we only get one in the winds? You know, we're just as po we're just as able to do uh, extra short and somewhat short, you know? Or staccato should mean separated, you know? I would love to see more options. Flautando, these always sound good. And again, with sounds good. Um, let's come down here. You know, all these pages it can be a bit uh, uh, tricky. I don't know if these are synced to tempo. So let's let's take a look here. If I go, no, I can't. I can't sync this to tempo. That would be really nice. I would love to see. Uh, sync to tempo tremolos um, as an option. Uh, again, you know that, it would be great if it if it existed, but I'm not gonna. I wouldn't discourage this product just for that. So. Soltastos are nice. If it could be possible, I'd like hearing two instruments from different sections in real time to appreciate the cohesiveness of sound. I mean, if I'm going to have a better feeling than what SSO offers, for example, horns and trombones at staccatos or horn and cello. Yeah, we can do that for sure. Uh, let me just, um, I will do that in a second. I'm just going to just finish up with this quickly. Uh, short harmonics. All this sounds good. All that sounds good. I love the variety of uh, tremolo soul, uh, tremolo. And spiccato consort. I just wish we had all that for woodwinds and brass. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's just try something here. Uh, let's open this guy up. Let's not worry about him. Let's go back here. Uh, yeah. So let's just try something. Yeah, we got a click track. So let's just see then. Uh, 
uh, what, let's maybe make this back down to 120. Sometimes my rhythm is not great, so. So, uh, is it, uh, Xavier, is it okay if we do it with a, um, uh, two instruments from different sections? So you were saying, uh, Horn, horn and cello. Strings sound really good with the addition of first lead is amazing. I think best thing of the entire library. Yeah, exactly. So we've got violin one and then violin one leader here. Well, I put it here. I still love my Joshua Bell. Again, <laughs> throwing some love to Embertone here. Uh, I still love the uh, the Joshua Bell uh, violin. It sounds just fantastic. Uh, where are you? I'll take this any day. Uh, we'll just let that load in. Um, you know, like obviously this is nice. You know, that sounds nice and all, but you know, when you have bit low, we'll just bring that up. I mean, you know, it's just a killer library. These are fine too, right? You know, the 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 cello the cello leader is nice. The level's a bit low there. Let's pull that up. Uh. It's really nice, um, but let's let's just try something here. Let's go. Let's uh, let's close you for a second. We're gonna add something just directly in here. Uh, let's go in. Let's add in a BBC. Da -da. Don't know why Cubase labels it as a synth, but. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it is great. So let's let's try something. Let's take uh, the brass and let's go horns. Uh, maybe horns F four. Let's try this. Um, let's just call this horns. Horns A four. Um, and let's see here. Uh, what's, uh, mm. what's a, what's a, what's a good melody to do? Uh, mm. yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's try this. So. For, I'm forgetting my uh, my thing here. Uh, so let's see. Something like that, and let's just hear that with uh, the cellos now. Oops. Uh, Let's hear how that sounds with the cellos. 
let's put the cellos back on uh, legato. That would help. So why aren't we hearing level? Because it's low. That's why. And let's take off that click. Da -da -da. Um, hey John, uh, thanks for coming by. Um, we've just been kind of going really deep on like a lot of little things. Um, I'd be curious to hear what everyone else thinks, but my overall feeling is strings are great. There's lots of nice stuff in the woodwinds and brass, but there's little things that uh, that that bug me, uh, particularly as coming from a wind background. Uh, so I'm always going to be a bit. Uh, I mean, playing at the same time two different instruments without record any. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, sure. Yeah, we can try that. <laughs> That's definitely interesting. Let's let, let's just let's try something for fun. Let's throw in all the strings together and just hear what it's like for some octave some octave playing. Okay, let's make sure we're all on the right sound here. Violas. I must have saved this uh, wrong. So let's throw you up on that. Uh, let's go up to violins too. I'll have to resave that and let's go up to violins one. Yeah. And let's hear. Actually, let's see my. Bases. Let's go back up to there and to legato. Okay, so now something. Not Everything should be uh, going straight there. Oh, I think some some legatos are maybe getting triggered. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's it it is. I hadn't considered trying uh, exploring it like this, but it, it is a fun way to to try and hear some examples, and you know. cool stuff yeah like I said I think the strings are a hundred percent a great reason to get this um, library uh, on their own they sound really good and you get everything else 
that being said, would I spend a thousand dollars like the non intro pricing? Would I spend a thousand USD on just strings? Maybe not, but you get everything else, and that's pretty cool. Um, so, 100%, I think the strings and everything is really cool. Um, yeah, you know, I mean. I don't have the Spitfire Symphonic strings. I do have uh, the chamber strings. I could pull that up. Um, you know, just for, for some comparison here. Uh, I like I like using the performance legato uh, generally. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a bit, uh, it is a bit of a smaller sound, but I do love the, um, uh, it is a bit of a smaller sound, um, and I love generally how playable this this patch feels. And I can boost this signal a bit. Yeah. I think this. I think the chamber strings are one of my favorite. I played around on a bunch before I was buying, um, and something about it just felt really nice. And they had this performance legato. I think maybe before uh, Spitfire Symphonic, before the Symphonic strings. I can't remember. Uh, it's all been a number of years now. But something about this to me was like, oh, this is what I want. Um, and then you know, in the mix, if I want, I I liked I like having a bit of. Uh, uh, a bit of close in there and just really getting that sense of you know and sometimes even just less tree and more close okay that was a bit much but uh because then you can also add in like say the the cellos and you really start to get a sense of, of, of the space. Uh, yeah, something like that. Oh, and I should. Uh, ah. With the close mics, you get much more of a sense of that space. Because um, if you just have the tree, uh, let's put that low, low, low. If you just have the tree, you kind of don't get that same space. It's much more like this, and I, I, I do like having that, that, that wider, that slightly wider image and that feeling of closeness. This is just a quick example here. I'm not really uh, showing it off in quite the right way, but yeah, I, so there are some things I really like about the, the, the chamber strings, but um, uh, no, it's fine. But, you know, overall these, uh, the, the BBC ones, I think, uh, really, uh, it sounds great to have that that big uh, that big sound. Uh, again, I was just working on some library tracks, and and I was able to to I was just finishing them up, and I just got the library, and I thought, you know what, the, the chamber strings aren't working here, and I threw them on, and they just worked, and it felt it felt nice to have that option. Um, to have that option in addition uh but i did this documentary uh two years ago already two years ago now um and the chamber strings just worked so much better because it was a much more intimate subject um uh 
Yeah, exactly. The 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 BBC really does come off as much beefier. And it's not even just like a level thing. I mean, this was maybe a bit quiet. You know, we can we can boost that signal a bit there. Um This really, you know, it is a much bigger sound than the chamber. But that chamber, you know, again, it's everything is everything in its in its place, right? This this could give much more of a baroque feeling. It could do so many other things. Like I said, I was doing a, a sort of a, a more intimate documentary. You don't necessarily want like this this big like sweeping emotional kind of thing. You know, we're, we're not going for Mahler, right? So it's, uh, but if you do want to do Mahler with this, uh, you know, what's, what's, uh, what's, what's a... Ah, I forgot my Mahler. You know, it, it, it has that, that kind of punch, which I think is great. Um, kind of coming around to just wrap up here, I want to just take a quick look at the um, at the percussion because I've got a few opinions on the percussion as well. Um, the thing that I like about the percussion, uh, do I find legatos just as playable? Uh, yes, the legato playing on the strings, 100% great. Uh, John, you weren't here before, but the legato on the woodwinds and brass is not the same. So maybe I'll go back and I'll try and give a, a few examples of that. Um, like I, I can do, while that's loading, I'll, I'll pull up the, 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 the horns here. Um, so these... These legatos sound pretty good. Um, like these, the horn section here sounds pretty good. That sounds great. I'm all for that. This solo trumpet, I'm a trumpet player. Uh, you may not have heard that yet. I've been complaining about, I, I had a little tirade on, on what I think sampled trumpets should sound like, and this is not one of them. <laughs> um, to me, this lacks character. Uh, this lacks, it doesn't sing, it doesn't give much. It's clean. Uh, it doesn't have, it doesn't really bring anything, you know? This is full, this is full volume. Like this is full dynamic and it's kind of like, Eh. The trumpet section is slightly better. But again, it doesn't, it doesn't really I've played, I'm not a professional trumpet player, and I've played in sections that just feel, that feel much more like, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. And the example I gave, I'm gonna pull it up here just cause, uh, cause I'm like that, is this $30 instrument from Embertone uh, has more character than the tr than the solo trumpet in the Spitfire Symphonic uh, Sim Spitfire BBC Orchestra, and it's not <laughs> to be clear. It's not a. I'm not making a comment against the trumpet player in in the orchestra. I'm sure he's great. Uh, he or she is great. But this, you know, at a as a thirty dollar instrument, 
this I don't find it as playable, but it doesn't it at least has character. It could use a little more sort of body to it, but it's it's the the spirit is in this one, you know? So Anyway, I don't want to go back too much on, on what we did before, but all this to say, you can always check out the, the, the rest of the video after we, we, uh, after we finish up here, which we're coming close to. Um, but yeah, you know what I mean? It's, there is just that feeling of like, oh, here's, um, we're really letting it sing and it, it, it has a character. So let's take a look at this percussion. Um, the thing I, overall, I think this percussion works well. Um, uh, we don't need that. Okay, and we should open that up. This timpani sounds really good. Uh, my, is my signal low or something? What, no, signal is there. So yeah, even on this one, you can see that the, the signal is a bit low on this, and I don't know why. Out of the box, it feels a bit low and far to me. I don't know why that is. Um, you know, the mix is at full volume there, but... If you really smash it, it gets a bit better not on that low note. The rolls are controlled by the mod wheel. Which is nice. That feels good. Um, it would be nice to have an option, maybe another key switch, where on release you would get an attack so that you could just like really lead into the downbeat and get a nice like strong downbeat. Um, but you know, little detail. The soft mallets, again, like I was complaining before about not having mutes and stuff in the, in the brass. Uh, and, but they went to the trouble of doing soft hits on the timpani and I think this is nice. you do want that that really felted sound sometimes that's really nice compared to the sort of maybe more medium uh, medium uh, thing um, medium uh, sort of felted uh, timpani sticks these have a little more bite, and that's nice. I think as a default, I think that, that hits a nice ground. But this soft is really nice to have as an option. It's a little softer. If you really wanted, you could EQ out a bit of the top end, but it's nice to just have an option that is true to the, to the source. This could be really nice uh, as is, uh, or as an effect. You could really do some neat things with this, like adding a delay and a crazy reverb, and you could really use the timpani in a non-traditional way to create effects. I think this could be really cool with the hot rods. You know, you could do some really neat things. Uh, in Logic, there's a great like delay designer. You could do some neat things. Uh, I don't know Cubase as well. I've just started learning it. Um, but, and you've got the rolls with them too. So it's nice. The damped hits, that's nice too. So that's kind of like a one second, half second to one second ring out. And then you've got the super damped. That's really nice. It gives you more clarity and definition when you want to have something stick out in the mix a bit. Uh, 
if you have a busy part or lots of uh, low-end uh, chords maybe filling out a section, but you still want to have your timpanis kind of give a rhythmic like that will help them stick out a lot better than, uh, than just doing the traditional hits. Because you've got all that resonance happening, I think this will be a really great tool to help get something out that wouldn't come out other, otherwise. And you could even do nice like repetitions like that. Yeah, a little bit like uh, Planet of the Apes, exactly. Uh, and then they also have these hot rods, uh, damped and soft. Uh, you have the hits, uh, soft and hot rods, uh, damped, which is nice too. Uh, it doesn't say how many round, uh, oh, it says four round robins, so that's nice. get some interesting stuff going there and the soft ones that's kind of like a nice mix between a, a timpani and a bass drum almost you kind of get that 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 whew of the of the bass drum but still just enough pitch to give uh, to give a sense Um, speaking of bass drum, this was an interesting choice on their part, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. So the way they decided to approach um, uh, unpitched percussion was to put them all in one, uh, all in one patch, and not in a sense that all the all of the elements are split across the entire keyboard, but they're really like separate key switches. Which if you're using articulation mapping or art, uh, logic articulation sets, uh, sorry, expression mapping or logic articulation sets, maybe less of a thing. But if you're working any other way, it's not gonna be terribly convenient to make this work. So you've got this anvil hit. Sort of open and damped. Uh, and you know you can uh, neighboring notes for repeating, which is fine. And then you go to bass drum one as a separate thing. And if these were not overlapped, you could in theory shift click them and have them combined. But the problem is they overlap with one another. So now I get bass drum and anvil. So it would have been cool if there was a way to create sort of a bass drum, snare drum thing, or if that was just how they created it to begin with. I think there is a way to, to create your own custom untuned percussion instrument and save it as your own personal preset. But in my opinion, you shouldn't have had to do that in the first place. Uh, I feel like they could have found a way to, to make that work uh, in a more interesting way. And they, they have, they've had other libraries that work something like that. But uh, let's take a listen to this, to this drum here. So these are nice bass drum hits. Sort of a, 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 this rings out a little bit and then a slightly more dampened sound. And then you've got a roll as well. Which is nice. Um, you've got a control on tightness and reverb. Uh, you know, if you throw in a bit of reverb there, like what do we get? Uh, whoops. Um, I'd be curious to experiment with EQ on this uh, or the mix, because uh, that's the other thing is that the mix now is going to uh, potentially, with these different types of instruments, how is that mix going to work? So like if I wanted to bring in close mic for this snare drum, uh, for this bass drum, See, 
that, that, that close mic is nice. It's giving me a little more definition. If I go back to the anvil, I've still got that close mic up. But maybe I don't want that close mic up on that anvil. So then I could turn off global, I guess. But again, like, uh, oh yeah, so if I, uh, if I, let's go back to Anvil. And if I bring down that and just put the mix back up, if I come back here and I go back to bass drum, yeah, I've got my mix. Again, not the end of the world. It's just, it's just another step. And I like avoiding extra steps because again, as a composer, I want to focus on creative and not on, on setting things up, you know? Um, but it, it all depends. So this second bass drum, I'm not exactly sure the difference here. Um, it's maybe a little smaller. It sounds like they've got some, uh, they've got sort of harder mallets and softer mallets. It's nice. It feels like it could maybe use a little more low end. Uh, but you can add a bit of that with EQ. The cymbals. These kind of ring out nice, but. That rings out a bit long for my liking. Oh, we have a, some bowed. It's a bit quiet, but I'll, uh, I'll boost it for the sake of this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, these are nice sounds, especially because I'm really tired of using the same east-west ones all the time. Um, that being said, full collection is that I've got about five different sizes with a lot of variations on everything. Uh, I'm just tired of using them because I've been using them for over 10 years uh, and I'm just tired of it. <laughs> so it's just a little limited, the symbol, but it's all right. The military drum sounds great, I think. That's good. And this is nice because they also provided a few options of, of uh, sort of different articulations for snare. release is a little loose. I'm going to try putting this tightness up and see what changes. So throughout all of these libraries, I have no idea what tightness does. If any of you know in the chat, I'd love to hear because I've got zero idea. Um, uh, Piatti for the crash. And then this is a bit low. I'll see if I can boost it. No, see, this is already as loud as it can go, and it's too quiet. I appreciate that rubbing cymbals together is naturally a bit quiet. Well, I mean, but even then, like... You know, I'm gonna, I'd have to make that... I'd have to really do something to make that work the way I want. Like, that's at full, that's at full velocity, and we it's it's hard to hear, so that's unfortunate. Snares. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this down in case it's a bit loud for. See, 
I don't mind the not having an, uh, a release note on the on the snare drum because it's all in the same octave. But on the timpani, because you've got all these different pitches, it's uh, it's it doesn't work the same way. But so yeah, I do wish that could be a little bit tighter. Like I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, that might be, I just, I don't feel it when I'm playing it. You know what I mean? Uh, that tightness, I don't feel that, that difference when I'm playing it. Um, so I'm not, I, you know, I'm not disagreeing with you. And for example, they've got it on, they've got it on this, uh, snare drum. I'm, I'm not seeing or feeling feeling or hearing a difference, you know? Um, so I don't know. It's, uh, it's, that's my observation. Um, but this is a, a smaller snare and a bit more in the hall. I don't know any snare drum player that releases like that though. That feels a bit weird to me, um, but finally, uh, Tam Tams. Sounds good, tambourine. Tightness doesn't work with all articulations. You can see the fader, but no action at all. Well, but this is what I'm saying is that in other, here, if I come over to, let's pull this guy up. If I pull up my trumpets here, when I'm on legato, I don't see tightness. So it's clearly patch dependent. Uh, like if I went to staccatissimo, it would show me tightness. I go back to legato, it doesn't show me tightness. So if I see tightness here and I don't hear a difference, then then something must be up. I think that's that's my feeling on it, you know. Um, but tambourine sounds good. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong thing. That's why. Uh, here we go. Tenor drum. Tom. Sounds good. Toys. It's nice. Triangle. Pretty straightforward, so. So with the percussion, my, my feeling is just like this, the untuned percussion, having it all on one thing is not ideal. You can go through and make your own patches uh, by, you know, going here and adding things you want, taking away things you don't want, and then saving it as and, you know, making your own thing. I just feel that maybe it would have been nice if they had included that on their own, but, you know, the little details. Ah, now we're on to the harp. Sure, something here, yeah, right? We so yeah. The level just feels a bit low on this harp. I just wish it had a little more presence. But maybe that would sound good as a mix in the hall, but. is good. The, again, the damped options are nice because it's also such a particular harp sound. The 
hear those, uh, to hear it kind of click. I think that's really nice. And then this, the slightly longer one, that's nice too. This Bigliando. Dynamic controlled. this might be nice. It's not all the strings either. And then they just have a few gliss effects. And kind of roughly correlated with the octave that they're in. sound really good. So no complaints about the harp. Um, I think that's 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 good as is. What do we have next year? Xylophone. I feel like it's hard to go wrong with the xylophone. Uh, I think one of the great options with with this, so you've got your regular hits, it would have been nice to have a few options for mallets. Again, I can understand if you, they, why they didn't, but the rolls are nice. It's a bit fast. It would have been nice to have a, a little option. Um, it would have been nice to have a little option for, for doing chord rolls, because that's just a bit fast for a chord roll. But, you know, again, it's... It's the kind of thing that if I if I had every wish the uh, if I had every wish of mine the library would be probably twice the size so I can understand how not everything makes the cut um, but this is also something I think having the mix the mix options here is nice sometimes with something like uh, xylophone you want nice pre delay you want that sense of like a little bounce from the back or something. So we can just take a listen to a little bit to the to the different mixes here. I'm just gonna try some different things. Uh, actually, that's a good question. Do they tempo sync? No, they do not. Uh, yeah, because they're just kind of just like the tremolos. They just uh, they're just straight up. So let's go back to regular hits. So the close mic is nice. If you add in a bit of the tree, you hear on the tree, you get a little bit more of that, like that, that pre-delay kind of uh, ambient sound. So now you can, if you balance a bit with the close and the tree, you can kind of get you can play with nice uh, sounds, I think. You know, there's, there's some really cool stuff. Uh, but the built-in mixes are, are good too. Um, what else? Uh, the rest of them, the marimba, we're also gonna get into the same place, I think. There's a lot of dynamic control on this. It feels really nice to play. Yeah, and I think there are always some instruments where you do want specific control and you want to really customize how that fits into a mix or provide options, uh, especially in the film world. Um, I know uh, 
a colleague of mine, he was recording something. It was this short film, and basically it's, it was an animated short film, and the for the first half of the film, things are always pushing in. You're always going deeper and deeper into this building. Um, and so the camera work is always just pushing in and pushing in and pushing in and pushing in. And, and then the second half is that it's coming out and out and out. And when he was recording, uh, the engineer actually said, okay, we're going to record at three positions and we're going to really play with that perspective for some of these things. Uh, and to have that option, if you want, in your film uh, could be really nice uh, to really m choose how these things are mixed. So, But marimba sounds great. This is more the speed that I like, I think. That sounds good to me. So, uh, moving on, what's next? Vibes? Oh, Glock. Uh, I feel like it's hard to mess up the Glock um, or any of these sort of uh, keyboard percussion. I mean, the rolls. Sounds good. Uh, can this? No. So let's see here. Vibes, yes, there is something here. So is it? So what we have, uh, if you just, uh, if you just play without your pedal, you have the 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 damp the regular dampened noise, and if you use the sustain pedal, you get you get your your vibrato option. So with with mod wheel all the way down, it's like the a really really slow vibrato there, but. I'm just curious, uh, where's my tempo at? I'm at 120. If I make that faster, I don't think it the tempo syncs. No, it doesn't. So, um, and again, you know, if you want more of that, that close end might be nice. Vibes are good. Low F, yeah. Celesta. The level's a bit low on this. So again, some of these levels are really inconsistent and I'll, I'll double check my routing here just in case uh, I'm making a mistake, but I don't think so. No, my volume's at zero, yeah. I tried with the wheel though, and... It's not making a difference, so... Very pretty. Uh, 
it's all good. I'm 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 good with Celesta. Just make sure there's uh there there was an option for damped as well, which is this is a nice little detail. Big wheel. Oh, you're right. See, I'm gonna come back to this. This is why I'm not a fan of this the the big knob uh, as a way of. Uh, oh, actually, so where was it? Was it this? Because yeah, exactly. I thought there was a way too. That's nice. It's not evident to someone just starting out with it that that's an option. And when you're working in your DAW, it's not always convenient or practical, or you don't always want to be looking at your plugin to 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 make a small change like that. So I'm not a, I'm not necessarily a fan of of that way of doing it. Um, but you know, it's something that I'm very aware of, and certainly all of us at uh, Montreal Music Labs are very aware of. And these are the kinds of problems we want to tackle and are looking at tackling. So making all of these things always easily available and readily available, they, these are the problems that we're approaching and we're, we're looking to tackle uh, very soon, actually. So I, I can't say anything right now, but you know, just to tease a little bit, we are expecting, uh, we will be talking a little bit more in a, about um, some future products soon. And these are the kinds of things that we're looking at is what I can say. So. Uh, more on that in a little bit, but uh, tubular bells, pretty straightforward, works for me. Got even the option of rolls, works, and then the damped. Here, um, let it roll out for a second. It brings out a little bit, but it's nice. Um, this is the kind of thing that if you want to have big hits in your in your queue, but you don't want it to um, to muddy up the mix after you want after you get that hit, and you don't want to automate like volume and all that stuff all the time, it would be nice to just be able to go. And it just kind of mutes itself. So that's uh, these are all good options. Um, and is there one other thing? I forget. Oh, the crotales, yeah. Pretty straightforward again. Two octaves of crotales, and fortunately they also have bowed. These are naturally a little, uh, on edge when it comes to tuning, but, um, yeah, I think uh, I think all in all, pretty good. Um, so that's it for the percussion. And I, like I said, I think there's lots of really cool stuff here. Um, but in the end, it's, you know, if I was gonna say, should you buy this or not? I think it really comes down to what you're looking for in a library. I know some people, like, if you already have every other library and you know, you're not, if you're not missing something, maybe you don't need it. Uh, if you're just getting started and you want something, uh, then maybe there is like, maybe the, maybe this does have what you need. Um, if you're going into this because you wanted brass and figure figured you'd get everything else, uh, just cause you might be disappointed. Not, not entirely. There's lots of good brass in there. So it's a question of what you're looking for. Um, and I, I, I hope that this, walk through and a chance to kind of maybe address some of your concerns helped uh, uh, address some of this. Um, because the problem when you're looking at any library is how, how does this compare to East West Hollywood Orchestra? I actually, I don't have the Hollywood Orchestra myself. I have the, um, I have the, the Symphonic Orchestra Gold, but my, I've, I've played around with Hollywood Orchestra a little bit, I think on a, on a, friends uh machine 
my understanding is that the legato and those feelings aren't there. The bass sound of like the brass and everything is still good. <clears throat> I I think uh, in general the the brass uh, the brass sounds good in that stuff. The winds as well, but it's it's just different. Um, oh my my pleasure, Richard. Um, they're just different, you know. Um, the one and the the other advantage I can say about uh, the East West stuff is now that they have uh, monthly plans, you can always try that stuff for a month. Yeah, you'll it'd be a bit of a pain to download everything or whatever, but you can tr you can download something for a month, see if it suits your needs. It'll cost you thirty bucks, and you know you can move on. Uh, if it works, great. If it doesn't, you can you can choose something else. That's not always an option for this for libraries like this, right? So, with all that being said, uh, yeah, exactly. And they they have fairly regular sales and options for sales, so uh, I wouldn't be too, you know. It's as a brass player, I enjoyed somewhat playing with the uh, cine samples. The 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 I don't have it on my PC um, right now. Uh, but I enjoyed working with Cine Samples, um, the Cine Samples Core uh, and Pro. I think that stuff sounded really good. So, uh, a friend of mine, he found that the he didn't like the the delay, uh, the the built in. It wasn't a question of uh, latency in the DAW. It was really like uh, the delay of the attack was uh, was was just not uh, for him, but. I haven't, the, the real brass library, in terms of brass, uh, the one that I've heard great thing, uh, that I wanna hear more about is the uh, Cinematic Studio Brass. Uh, I've heard lots of great things about the Cinematic Studio Strings, um, but yeah. Uh, that is gonna have to be it for today. I've gotta run. I've actually got a studio session to, to head out to, but I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, lots of deals are coming up, and what I will say for sure is we're gonna have lots. Uh, we're gonna have lots of things uh, coming up soon with Montreal Music Labs, and so what I will uh, put out quickly here is, uh, if you go to our website, uh, at the bottom of the website, you can join our mailing list, and we're gonna have. Uh, yeah, great. I'm glad. Uh, you can go back and. Uh, you can sign up to our mailing list, and like I said, we're going to have some really interesting things coming up soon, uh, news in the next week or so. So come here, check it out, uh, sign up, and and I I think there will be some really interesting stuff. So um, You have updated the library with the latest update, and you have no problems with the RAM, etc. If I have not bought it until now, it was for this reason. So far, things seem to be good. Uh, I haven't I haven't done a big test, but everything seems to be good so far. I'll pull up Activity Monitor just to see here. Uh, but uh, Vian Ensemble Pro is showing four gigs, so maybe there is an issue. Um, maybe maybe there still is an issue. I'm not sure because. There's no way I'm using this much RAM out of 32 gigs, right? So, um, performance, like, there's no way I'm using half my RAM uh, on on one instance in VEP and and things. So maybe there is still an issue. Um, like I said, I'm I'm not as worried about that because I know that it's something they're aware of. They've they've said they're going to address it. So to me, it's just a matter of time. Um, But again, thanks so much for coming by. Please join the mailing list uh, and we'll make sure to send you some really interesting news really soon. And of course, I'll be posting it elsewhere, but uh, you'll get it here first. So thanks so much. And uh, yeah, if you do end up getting it, let me know and let other know let other people know in the comments. Uh, you know, these things always work well like that. So thanks again and uh, have a good night. <laughs>